What's going on guys, Savage here. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing teamwork and covering Quad's gameplay. Once you guys go out there and get a lot more wins and Quad's is probably one of the easiest modes to do that in. However, you guys are lacking teamwork and you guys are lacking simple know-how and making those same mistakes over and over again as a squad, you're gonna have a very hard time. I know sometimes you guys are playing with players and they don't like to play as a team. You need to correct that so that you guys can go out there and become better players. But if you do enjoy the content, make sure you leave a like on the video. The goal for today is going to be 600 likes, so please help us get that. Also, subscribe to the channel today, and without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay. All right, so here we are spectating Fox, who's landing out here. Uh, not really sure why. We got a lot of things we can do. We just lost a teammate who, of course, can't come back because of his gulag. So what I would have done in this situation, again, teamwork, this is dream work, land on a damn supply run. Really easy to do. Come on, man. If we would have landed the supply run, our teammate who's also coming back in from the gulag could have landed on the buy station that it identified, and then we'd have all three of us. But instead, unfortunately, Fox wasn't either paying attention or didn't give a shit. And here we are now. Now, this is a quads gameplay. We do have three teammates. So I'm gonna assume one of two things. Either A, these guys are cracked out of their minds, they're just playing trio quads, or two. There are a bunch of randoms that are playing together, and this could be a very interesting gameplay. And I'm going to go ahead and assume it's probably a bunch of randoms based on the uh, lack of teamwork right off the bat. So for Fox, his movement seems pretty decent. He, he's been playing this game for a good minute. Um, Rice, though, doesn't seem that with it. You can notice he's staring at the ground the whole time as he's traversing throughout the map. Huge mistake, guys. Reticle placement is crucial when it comes to any shooter, not just BRs. If you guys are staring at the ground the whole time, when an enemy pops out, you got to not only snap to the enemy, but you have to drag your damn crosshair up off the ground and hopefully flick it on his face. It's a lot more micro corrections than just doing this. If you guys do do all this. All right, but we do have enough for a loadout. Unfortunately, because we're so separated, it doesn't look like we'll be getting it anytime soon. At this point here, you need to collapse on each other. Your boys need to get the chopper, come pick us up, go to the buy station, and get your damn loadout. The fact that Blue's still over here looting is just absolutely insane. We were able to buy a teammate back, and we still have enough for a loadout. And still, Paradise is like, I'm just, I just want all the ammo. I want all the dollar bills. And um, again, the, the crucial part about getting your loadout as fast as possible is what happens if you run into a, a quad? What happens if a team pushes this building? We have a stupid ass LMG that nobody wants to play with. And uh, we're going to get absolutely shit on because not only we separated from our squad, but also on top of that, we don't have anything. We have shit ass guns. And then this. What are we going to do with this? Also, slide cancels are extremely uh, incorrect. You guys want to slide and then cancel your slide almost instantly. Not completely instantly, but almost instantly. It's like slide, cancel, slide, cancel. If you complete your slide to completion, you're, it's all that's doing is slowing down your gameplay. All right, but here we are now ADSing on uh, rocks and broken tanks. We're hitting prone because we're pretty we're pretty terrified by whatever's over there. Not really sure what he saw. Unless he's got walls and knows something I don't. I have no idea what the hell he's doing. Zero. We're going to go ahead and go back to Fox because he seems to be with it. Here we go. In the loadout and out the loadout. Let's go ahead and move on out. Not a bad, not a bad loot choice right here. Hopefully we'll get some aggressive gameplay. Price, brother, you got it. You got to be better. You got to be better. Good on Fox for not getting irritated and just flying away. I definitely probably would have, even though it's not the play. Um, again, dude, if you have teammates you're playing with, or if you're the teammate that's always the last guy to the chopper, the last guy to get your load out, and you just speed it up. It's fine. I was that guy with the squad that I was playing with a long time ago. And you just have to identify that and correct that. Make sure you're always on your teammate's heels or you're always in sync with your teammate, even if you guys aren't running together. We have enemies shooting us from the rooftop. We're bailing off, jumping out completely. Thank God that the enemy had bad aim. Random stun, don't like that. Not a huge fan at all. Now you can jump to the roof using the ladder above us. Uh, they stole our shit. Left, there you go. Oh, no, you just missed it. You can jump on the rooftop from uh from this building, but never mind. I'm gonna be honest, not really sure what Fox is doing. I don't think he has any idea what he's doing either. Blue's holding the left hand side of the building, and orange is holding the right hand side of the building, and we're just separating ourselves from the enemy to hopefully get some good sniper shots off. Not a bad decision. I'm gonna be honest. 
We're able to get one kill. Not sure how many enemies are there. I believe we only got shot from one. So honestly, I didn't read what Fox was doing. Um, and he actually had a really good play. So shame on me for not, not understanding what he was doing. It was a good play separating from the enemy. But again, what I would have done originally was jump on the roof. That would have been the better play. Also, guys, if you're looking for an energy drink that has no crash and is healthier for you than all these other energy drinks with a bunch of random shit in it, guys, try Sneak. I've been drinking this for almost two years now, and I've been absolutely hooked. Um, the new cola flavor is out, and I know it sounds weird, cola, like Coke, but it's fire. Try it. And if you guys do, make sure you use code SAVAGE at checkout. Appreciate it. But here we are now fighting either the same team or a whole other team to the North 30. Now, when you're in a gunfight like this, okay, first off, you hear them fighting, so I'd go ahead and push in and third party them. But even if you were, you know, 1v1ing these teams, as you're sitting out here in the open, you're shooting at these guys, the longer that you sit there behind the salt, the more chance you have to get shot in the ass by another team rotating to you because they hear you shooting. I hear foxes going into a 1v god knows what. Our other teammates are kind of just, they're kind of just chilling. All right, orange is finally pushing up. Hopefully we can get a nice little pinch, but we need to pinch together. If we end up pinching one at a time, we just fall into this thing where they're just basically going to be shooting fish in a barrel and they're going to take us out one at a time. Not really sure the gas, the, the crouch walking play. We have enemy falling in behind us. Nope, nope, you just, okay, you didn't see him. And again, this is the fear kind of hindering our own game performance. We know where they're at. We know that they were in here. But they might not be anymore because it took us so damn long to actually to actually push that building. And again, the longer it takes for you guys to push the enemy, you might as well not even push because by the time you actually hit the building, they're going to be rotating out. Nice shot. Are we able to get it? Oh, no. There we go, dude. Fox. Fox. Come on, man. Aim for the head, too. Guys, look. One of the most difficult thing in FPS is, is to learn to go for headies. It is the most difficult thing in the world. Um, but you guys have got to do it. The best way I can recommend is playing headshot only mode against bots um, in any game and just practicing shooting, shooting up, you know, aim higher than what you normally would. We do have an enemy inside of here. We got blue and orange shooting out. I'm going to slow open the door. Notice though, Paris or Parice has a level three bounty on him. We're still going to be the ones to push. Oh my god. We're able to crack the armor. Very bad time for a nade. Very bad time for a nade. There's gonna be an enemy on the left hand side. There's gonna be on the right hand side. We gotta be careful when we get shot in the back. Actually, never mind. Um, Paris, don't know where he's at, but he's able to take out the last guy. And there we go. 3v2 those enemies on to the next. Now again, pushing that fight, I didn't like that whole that whole situation. That was very just unorganized um, by both squad, to be honest. Both enemies, for some reason, knowing that we were out there because Parise was shooting at them earlier, um, they shouldn't have just jumped out of the window, especially the same one, and and tried to get away. They should have played that building to the best of their ability. All right, here we are rotating again. It's a common thing. We just see teams playing the edge. Now, look, if you guys are aggressive and you're wanting to get more kills, play the edge of the circle and hunt down teams. Now, when I say play the edge of the circle, I'm not talking about like this. I'm talking about literally, you hear gunshots, Go to them and just knock out on these squads because people do love sitting on the edge for the wrong reasons. If you're an aggressive player wanting to up your kills, play the edge. But you're going to have to move around. Don't play the edge and just sit there playing slow and passive because that, that's not the way. That's the people that usually get cleaned up, not the people that do the cleaning up. All right, here we are pinging enemies over here. Now look, because the circle's rotating, you got to go ahead and predict where you want to go. I, right here, want to go to an array because that's exactly where these guys are going to go. You can cut them off. Position yourself here as well. But the last thing I'm going to do is just beeline it to him because you will end up probably dying because of lack of cover, lack of concealment, and the fact, again, you're going to have to fight the gas and the enemies at the exact same time. And that's exactly what we're hoping to do with these guys. We'll shoot the enemies, the gas will force them to move out from behind their cover, and they're going to get killed. Reason number two why I tell you guys to not play the edge of the gas if you're playing passive because you will get caught out and gate kept by players like this. Unfortunately, we're challenging the enemy with no cover, just kind of sitting out there in the open. Again, you want to use this and lead the enemies, but make sure you're using cover. Thankfully, Andanagui was able to go ahead and get a double knock. Paris getting another one as well. 
And Paris goes down as well, doing the exact same mistake fake uh, Fox just made. Enemy on our left-hand side. And Don instantly registering that and trying to track him down. Let's see if we're able to get this kill. This should have been a good team fight for us to win. But again, because we decided to challenge the enemies out in the open with very little cover. And when I say very little, I mean zero. We could lose this team fight. Got the enemy to our 300. He's in the window right there. Good speed. I would love to spectate this guy a little longer. And Don, I think the, he's got to be the carry and the goat of the squad. Because man, he literally just blazed through these squads by himself. I'm very surprised that Paris did not get executed, but thankfully did not. We're able to move on out. We got a buy station down here. When I look at the circle, however, strategically and position wise, I'm going lumber because I don't want to go downtown and stadium because the circle will finish farmland. And then the reason why I'm saying that is because I had a feeling that they would go to the closest buy station. In my opinion, I'd go here and just make my way to lumber or farmland and get set up. Notice how we just heard a loadout being dropped to our left-hand side, and we're not even acknowledging that at all. Not sure what blue's marking. Could have been a false ping. It's not every day we have it. We have teammates pinging nothing, though. So I would imagine there's probably a player over there, or well, maybe not. Again, teamwork, guys. Look, also, um. You know, it's not a bad thing. If you think there's an enemy over there, ping it. Make sure you ping it for sure. Um, but hopefully you have comms with your team saying, like, hey, bro, there's not someone over there, but I think there may be someone over there. Because Amdon just wasted a lot of time trying to get an angle on a position on an enemy that wasn't there. Sun grenade going out. We do have an enemy inside the building for sure. Oh, and we're getting stunned as well. Trying to hold the angle, drop shotting, but that's not good when you're stunned, my guy. Blue needs to wrap around hurry up and get to us, but unfortunately it does not look like it's going to happen. Oh, no. Oh! Oh no! And just like that, we go down GG to the squad that I was really hoping would put on a show for us. That's unfortunate. Again, another reason why I said that I wouldn't go down here is not only for positioning, but you're gonna have a lot of people rotating out this way from the wager buildings going to that buy station. And you're lucky there weren't already people at this buy station waiting for people to come to you. I mean, look, this team literally just killed us and here they are in another fight. All right, we got five kills, we got six kills, we got three kills, and we got five. We'll keep spectating uh, your boy Luo, though. All right, here we are doing a hard rotation, going to farmland again, dude. Just reading the circle, trying to figure out where it's going. That's huge when it comes to middle and end game. You guys do not want to end up being stuck at stadium, fighting a thousand fights like these guys kind of were on the edge. Um, and then by the time you have a chance to rotate safely, you're getting picked from everyone downtown. You're getting picked from people from farmland because this is super, stupid vulnerable. Now, unfortunately, our dude Silver's decided he's going to go to stadium. He may get caught out in the open and he may not have a, he may not have a fun time. No pings going out. There's the left-hand side. Good ping. I was about to slay him for not pinging, but he did. He's missing his shots, but his sensitivity and his... His settings seem to be accurate. He's not overshooting. He's just simply missing. I will say crosshairs are everything too. I hate his crosshair. It's so distracting and it's hard to see enemies. Gas is coming in. We need to go. We need to go. All right. Fuck it. Chen able to go ahead and get a double kill. And of course, Silvers goes down. Weird. Who would have thought? I don't like the fact that both blues decide they're going to go in here. You got to let Silvers die. You gotta let them die, man. And I, that's a bad team play, I know, but I don't like the fact that we're going down here. And, and, and it kind of looks like Luo is as well. There's too much shit going on. Not to mention, even if we do get the res, these guys are holding this angle. They're going to kill you both. Blue realizing that, hopefully bailing out altogether. Nope, looks like he's looting. Strategical wise, this is an absolute cluster. It's a nightmare. I do not like it. I'll be surprised if they don't die, but it just depends on how much they hit their shots and how much the enemies don't. Lua with the right play, taking a little too long right now. He may get caught up in the gas trying to vault up here. Let's see. Nope, we're good. And again, the longer it takes for them to rotate, the more chance they have to get caught up in the gas. And they're gonna have to, they're gonna be forced to have to come up this area um, and I guarantee you there's going to be some teams there. And of course, we'll be separated. It could be harder for us to win the game. Again, guys, you have to have a plan of action. You have to work together. The fact that Silver's decided to be a dumb shit and go down to stadium 
uh, was no bueno. House is about to go down. There he is. Silver's as well. Weird. Who would have thought that was going to happen? Not me. No. Unfortunately, we're engaging in a fight with an enemy very pretty far away. We're in the gas. Not even worried about our left-hand side, which is a huge mistake. Someone bought a teammate back to the 165. Register that in your head and get ready for that. There's going to be a team camping over in this building and or this building. Maybe the buy, but these are the better buildings to camp because they're bigger, have more windows. So that's what I'm going to be more worried about. And that's how I kind of analyze situations and decide where I want to go. If I want to avoid these buildings or if I want to avoid campers in these buildings or if I want to avoid campers in this area, I'll just make sure to avoid the bigger buildings. Now, when you look at this circle here, you can play the edge. It's slow. It's it's going to be in game. So playing the edge wouldn't be a bad idea. Also, you don't want to get caught up in the open and get shot from 19,000 different buildings. So slowing down your gameplay wouldn't be a bad play. Looks like we may get lucky and get enough money to get our teammates back, though. There's a few crates in here. Fortunately, no money. We do have enough for one squad mate back. Um, do not go here. That's that's absolutely crazy. Do not go here. We know there's going to be teams sitting there watching it because they just bought a teammate back. In fact, buy stations are probably not going to be a good idea, but because there's only 10 enemy teams left and the circle's still relatively big, you could kind of go for it and risk it for the biscuit. Again, I do not recommend that one for multiple reasons. One, wow, what timing, look at that. Wow, Savage, how'd you know where they're gonna be camping at? I don't know, bro, it's weird. Um, <laughs> But not only that, you have the gas as well closing in. So this is the last place you wanna go. This is the buy station you wanna go to. There may be a team in here ghosted out. There may not be, but regardless, it's your best bet. There's the least amount of buildings around this buy station. There's still a lot, but compared to this, way less. Now, the only downfall to being in this building is you are gonna be on low ground. So if you do decide you wanna get out the building and start working the edge, you're gonna have to worry about the people on the high ground shooting down on you. Again, our mission right now is to buy our teammates back. That should be our primary mission. If we die, we do nothing for our squad, but go back to the damn lobby. We need to focus up on this buy station, not just because we need to buy a team, but because there's enemies here. We just bought a teammate back as well. All right, get the knock. Get out of this position, dude. You just shot it and pissed off the team to your left-hand side. And here we are focused on the execute. No bueno. Y'all are taking way too long to get your teammates back. Speed is of the essence when it comes to in-game situations, guys. You want to slow down your gameplay, but when you have a mission, when you have something you need to do, you got to get it done. I got a little sentry gun placement. Not, not, not too bad of an area, honestly. Don't like the fact that we're sitting right here because we have the entire south hand side staring us down our throat. Teams are dropping like flies. We have 20 enemies left, six enemy teams trying to go for the window jump. We don't make it. Now look, in this position here, it wouldn't be a bad idea to kind of separate. The only downfall with separating in this position is the fact that if one of you gets knocked in the window, you're going to have to leave your position to get to that team or to get to that player before the enemy team actually pushes you. We're going to rock a rocket launcher, fam? Well, if you're going to use a rocket launcher, use it now, my guy. <laughs> Come on, dude. What do you, why the rocket launcher? Please tell me you're going to swap that weapon. Please tell me you're swapping this bitch out. Also about positioning. We're, we're wanting to stay around this area, but we need to leave, dude. I don't want to be here. I want to be here. I want to be here for sure. It's a bigger building, multiple windows. You can see everyone rotating. That's where I want to be. This little bit of area on the edge of the circle, all you get to see is this way. You can't see right here, but all you can see is this way. Right here, though, again, you can see 365 around, the, around that building. What are we doing, my guy? All right, we got a teammate down about to bleed out. You might want to go, you might want to go get him. Oh, no, fuck it. Okay. Okay. Enemies inside coming out the window, bro. Why are we sitting out there in the open? We're able to get the kill, thank God. But there's more teammates that are pushing our left-hand side. At least I thought they were pushing our left-hand side. We got a bag too, boys. Do we have enough for our teammate? No, we do not. Yes, we do, actually. No, we don't. Chin in the middle of a fight. We're too busy looting. Let's go help our team. It's Fletcher again coming back for vengeance. And unfortunately not being not being able to claim it. I do like the fact that we're going to green ping. It's probably your best position right now. We have blue fighting somebody. We got enemies to left hand side. House didn't even notice them. Chin getting pushed right now. We need to go ahead and ping the enemies as we're shooting. So Chin has an idea what's going on. There's an enemy could be in the house right here and Chin has no idea. There he is. And Chin's able to get the knock. Thankfully able to get a double knock, but he's in it. We got to go help our teammate. Orange, what are you doing? 
Silvers, where are you going? I'm sorry, not Silvers. Luo, brother. Yo, can we please start worrying about like position and stuff? You see this ridge right here? That's where I'd be at. Just playing this ridge. Not out here in the open getting sniped in the face. All right, but ladies and gentlemen, here we are in a position where we don't need loot. We don't need money. We don't need anything. We're good. Let's again play this ridge that Luo is actually on playing relatively well. It's a 3v4 situation. We are at a disadvantage. Sniper shots going off to our right-hand side. And they're going to be spread out. And they're going to pick us off one by one again because we weren't playing the damn ridge. Don't go for the res in this fight. They're going to go ahead and... I would uh, the enemy team should be pushing. Here's tip number one, guys. If you get a knock, push the enemy. Another sun going out. That one actually did not go off for some reason. And again, the, the crucial part of playing the ridge in this fight right here. I don't, I don't know if I want any of these guys to win the game. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest right now. They, none of these teams deserve to win this game. It's a, it's a 3v1 right here. We'll discuss this team fight. <laughs> and the importance of teamwork after. <laughs> and unfortunately, they do win the game and GG. All right, guys, so the importance of this team fight and what I was trying to get across was the fact that we should have been playing that ridge because if that enemy team would have been smart and played it correctly, if they would have stayed spread out using their own ridges, using their own cover that they had, they could have put shots on us one at a time, taken us out one at a time. Also in that position, they outnumbered us four to three. The moment they got that knock, they should have 4 v 2 would us, pushed our squad and gotten the kill, but they didn't. They hesitated, they played scared, they succumbed to the fear, and they ended up losing the game. That's exactly what I'm trying to teach you guys not to do. Again, if you look at this ridge right here, if they would have played this ridge and the enemies would have been good and pushed in and collapsed, we could have picked them off one at a time because we had a great amount of cover. Also, when we went down and our teammate Chen had to run across the street to get the res off, it put our teammate in a very bad position. Again, if we would have been by that ridge, we would have got knocked. All we had to do was just turn right, get the res off, and go back to fighting. In those situations right there, you need to play the best amount of cover. Don't just stand out in the open spraying at enemies. Don't have any idea what the hell he was doing. It ended up working out. And unfortunately for that team, because it worked, they're going to play like that again, even if it means they're going to lose and lose and lose and lose the next month, the next year, because it worked that one time. Guys, break out of these habits. Just because it works doesn't mean it's correct. You guys want to win more consistently. You guys want to drop kills more consistently. And this is not how you do it. Look, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like on it. Again, today's goal for the likes is going to be 600. So help us achieve that. Also, if you enjoyed the video, whether you learned something new or you just enjoy the content in general, make sure you subscribe to the channel today and join the Wolf Pack. But guys, I really hope you guys are getting better. I hope you're enjoying Warzone. And as we get ready for Vanguard, I'm going to be amping up the lessons a little bit more, diving a little bit more in depth so that you guys can get ahead of the curve when Vanguard gets released. Guys, you have a good one. And until next time, keep on improving.